Hi everybody, it's Laura. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I have a layout that I made using the My Creative Scrapbook Limited Edition Kit for January. I'm starting off with a beautiful pattern paper that I cut back just a little bit so that there'll be a white border all around the outside. I'm using some Distress Oxide in Hickory Smoke to ink the edges of all four sides of the paper. And you can see that I go around the paper more than once just to make sure that it's dark enough. Now I'm using the stencil that was included in the January kit with some modeling paste and I'm adding a little bit of texture to a couple of places in the background. I know that I'm going to have a cut file in the center of the layout, so I want to put the modeling paste along some of the edges. I'm not sure at this particular moment which edges are going to show, but I thought that if I put the modeling paste in a couple of different places, some of the modeling paste would be visible in the final layout. And I actually go back and add just a little bit more right toward the end of the layout creation process. For a while, I was considering whether I should put some modeling paste in the center. I know that my cut file is going to go there, but I was thinking that maybe having a little texture behind the cut file might look nice. But ultimately, I decided that I was going to just have the texture around the outside. I didn't want there to be too much white on the background because I want the cut file to contrast with the pattern paper. After I allowed the modeling paste to dry completely, I put some ATG adhesive on the back of the pattern paper, and then I mounted the pattern paper on a piece of smooth white 120 pound cardstock. I took my cut file, which I cut out, backed with some of the pattern papers, and then did some stitching on, and I attached that down to the background as well. The photo that I'm using on this layout measures three and a quarter inches by four and three quarter inches. I mounted the photo first on some white cardstock and then again on some pink cardstock that I thought went well with the colors in this collection. We received some very beautiful chipboard in the January kit. I just love the butterflies and I also love this beautiful scroll. I decided that I was going to cut the scrolls off of the frame that they were on and then place them next to each other on the top of the layout. And I just love the way that adds a little focal point to the top of the layout. I wanted to emboss both of the scrolls. So I used some gold embossing powder by the Personal Stamp Exchange. I had that in my stash and I thought that this color would go really well with the gold accents that are on the paper in this collection. Whenever I'm heat embossing chipboard, or pretty much anything else. I like to add several layers of embossing powder, usually two, sometimes three. For these scrolls, I ended up embossing them three times. The more layers of embossing powder that are applied, the more dimensional the embossing powder looks. And I also think that embossing several times helps to cover up any imperfections. So I repeated the process of adding some adhesive, covering the piece with embossing powder and then heat embossing three times. Now I'm going to use some Distress Oxide in Hickory Smoke and ink the edges of a number of elements that I want to include on my page. I have a number of butterflies. I also took an entire sheet of floral pattern paper and I fussy cut out all of the flowers. I used quite a few of the flower clusters that I fussy cut out on this layout, and I also used them on some of the other layouts that I created using this month's kit. I'm a really big fan of adding photo corners to my layouts. I usually use my EK Success photo corner punches. This way I can make the photo corners match the layout by punching them out of the same paper that I use to make the layout. So I chose some floral bits of paper to punch these photo corners out of. I inked the edges of all the photo corners with some Victorian Velvet Distress Oxide, and then I used some ATG adhesive to attach them down. Now I'm ready to add some embellishments to the layout. I started off with these gorgeous Prima flowers that were included in this month's kit. I just love all of the different shades of pink in these flowers. 
I'm also using those flower clusters that I had mentioned earlier that I fussy cut out from one of the pattern papers. And then I have a number of other die cuts that I'm going to include on the layout as well. I wanted to start off though by making the flower clusters. I have a flower cluster in the lower left-hand corner in the upper right-hand corner. And I have another small cluster to the left of the letter O. I don't use any of the dimensional flowers there though. I'm just gonna keep the dimensional flowers in opposite corners of the layout. I also add some butterflies to the layout. And then in one of the flower packs, there were some tiny flowers. I thought that these would look really nice tucked into the letters of the cut file. Now I'm ready to start working on getting those clusters attached down to the page. I wanted to pop up some of those fussy cut floral clusters. So I use some fun foam that's in my stash and I add a little bit of dimension to some of the flower clusters. I don't pop up all of them, but I did think that it would be nice to have some of them have a little bit of dimension. After I add the foam to the flowers, I use some ATG on the backs of them, and then I begin attaching all of these embellishments down to the page. I also use some foam to pop up the wings of the butterflies. That's something else that I love to add dimension to on my pages. And then after I have them popped up, I press them down in the center and that helps the wings to kind of spread out a little bit and give them some dimension. I placed a butterfly at the top of the letter U. I'm going to end up moving that butterfly up a little bit. Once I attach down the two embossed chipboard pieces, I move it up a little bit where I think it looks better anyway. And it also helps to kind of cover up, not a gap, but the place where the two pieces of chipboard meet. Now I'm ready to attach down those dimensional flowers. I'm using some heavy gel medium and a really old paintbrush to do that. I find that these old bristle brushes that I have that are no longer good for painting are perfect for adding gel medium to items on my pages. Gel medium is essentially glue and I don't wanna ruin my good brushes with it. Next, I use some gel glue to attach down the chipboard pieces. I could have used the gel medium but because there were so many open areas between the scrolls, I was afraid that the gel medium might get a little messy looking. And I thought that the gel glue might work out better because you can apply it with a little bit more precision than the gel medium. I didn't want the chipboard to pop up later. So I made sure that I had some gel glue on every one of those scrolls. I position both pieces of chipboard. I use my T-square ruler just to make sure that everything is straight in that area. And then I use my mini die cutting machine and a container of gel medium to press down on the chipboard pieces while they dry. This worked really well. The chipboard pieces are laying perfectly flat on the page. I'm adding some pearls to the centers of the butterflies. I'm using strips of adhesive pearls. These are Paper Studio brand. Because I have that very large area with the gold embossing powder on the top of the layout, I wanted to add some gold in a couple of other areas. The centers of the flowers are already gold, so I thought that that was perfect, but I wanted to add some more touches. So I'm using some Pink Fresh Studio pearls and I am attaching those down to the four photo corners. I like to use the adhesive glossy accents to attach things like pearls and sequins down to my pages. I'm using a paper clip that I've opened up and I'm dipping it into the glossy accents to get a little bit of that adhesive on the photo corners where I wanna put the pearls. The reason for that is that I bought a top, a special top to dispense the glossy accents and it ended up not working out so well and I had thrown away the original top so now I have to use methods like a paper clip and dip it in the adhesive in order to get that adhesive out of the bottle but that's okay it works out just fine and I really don't blame that dispenser top that I bought glossy accents is very thick and it dries really quickly and it does tend to clog things up but I still love it and I think it's the best adhesive that I've used for things like pearls. I cut some of those strips of pearls that I use on the butterflies into pieces and I added the pearls to the 
embossed chipboard at the top of the page. I also used some glossy accents off camera to make sure all of those were attached down. I also changed the way that I had the flowers in the lower left hand corner. I had to pull them up and it caused a little bit of a tear, but that was okay. I was able to use another fussy cut flower cluster and layer it on top of where I had the tear. And I like the way those flowers look the way that they're positioned now better than the way that they were before. I wanted to add some tiny flowers around the larger flowers, so I just used some small off-white flowers that I had in my stash, and I added those to each of the two flower clusters. I liked the way they had gold centers in them, and once again, I used some heavy gel medium to attach those down to the page. And those tiny off-white flowers, those are from my stash. I like to keep small white flowers on hand. I think that they really help flower clusters to come together pretty easily. And I love using the gel medium to attach flowers down to the layout. However, these flowers are so small, I could have also used the gel glue, but I did have my gel medium handy, so I decided to go with that. I wanted to add something more to fill out those flower clusters, and then I also wanted to add some more touches of gold to the layout. I used a Creative Expressions die set called Berry Branches and the same embossing powder that I used on the chipboard earlier. And I cut out and then embossed a whole bunch of these little branches. And now I'm cutting them into smaller pieces and tucking them behind the flowers on the layout. I include these little gold branches in the larger flower clusters and then also the smaller ones that I have on the cut file. For the larger clusters, I use more of them. And then for the smaller clusters, I just use little bits of them. And I cut the die cuts into smaller pieces and I try to use every bit of them. It does take a while to emboss all of these branches. And some die cuts can't really be cut into so many smaller pieces. But one of the reasons why I like this particular die set is because you can cut these branches into lots of smaller pieces and each of the individual pieces look really good. I have some dies I can't do that with, so this is why this is one of my favorites. For this layout, I was thinking that the title Our Story goes really well with the photo. Most years, my family and my sister's family get together on Mother's Day and we go to a nearby restaurant and it's really nice. We're there with our children and our husbands and it's just a nice way to celebrate Mother's Day and it's just become kind of a tradition. That's why I thought that our story was a good title for this now tradition that we have in our family. Once I had all of the gold branches where I wanted them, I used some gel glue to attach them down to the page. And then I decided to add a little bit of Finnebear Heavy Gesso to those small white flowers. I was okay with them being off-white because there are a lot of off-white elements in the pattern papers, but I wanted them to be a little bit more prominent. So I thought that if I added some gesso, they would look a little bit more white. It helped a little bit. If I really wanted them to look super white, I could have added some acrylic paint. Next, I started moving around some of the butterflies. I moved two tiny pink butterflies up to the top where I have the chipboard. And then there was another die cut butterfly. I trimmed off the white edge and now I'm trying to decide where I wanna put it. I keep moving it around. After adding some foam to the wings to give that butterfly a little bit of dimension, I move it around quite a bit. It finally ends up on the flowers between the letters O and R in the word story, although right now I have it on the left-hand side of the letter O. And so that that pink butterfly will match the other pink butterflies on the page, I add some pearls to the center. I also use some small fussy cut flowers and I spread them around the cut file just to further embellish that cut file a little bit. I also added a tiny blue butterfly between the letters O and U. Once again, I used the stencil and some modeling paste to add a little bit more texture in the lower right hand corner. In my scrapbooking room, I have a binder where I keep die cuts that are left over from other projects. And I had a number of these little white branches and I thought that these would add a nice element to 
the flower clusters. I'm just going to add them to the two larger flower clusters. I often like to add white elements to the flower clusters. I think it just brightens them up a little bit and then it also fills them out. Although these are pretty full, it adds another dimension to them. So I tucked just a couple of those into the larger clusters and then I used some gel glue to attach them down to the page. That was the very last touch. This layout is complete. And here are some close-ups. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I really appreciate it. And I really hope that you enjoyed watching it. I want to say thank you for all of the views, all of the likes, and especially all of those really lovely comments. They really make my day. I so appreciate it. Please don't forget to check out the My Creative Scrapbook website. The link is in the description box. You could check out the limited edition kit and all the other kits that they have available each month on their website and purchase a subscription if you would like. I hope you have a wonderful day and a happy new year and I hope to see you soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <music>